one of my favorite things about educating is like being in a room with, with people and seeing like the lights come on for somebody. And like, I, I know they're changing their life right then, like in making decisions. And then they come up afterwards and we chat. And like, yeah, I was just I like, <laughs> totally like, so I've been missing that, you know, I love this and, and I, we're going to continue to show up and just serve as much as we can. And, um, but I, I just like, I wanted to know, like, Hey, it's okay for me to be in a funk some days. And I reached out to some friends um, who are very like, one of them's like a seven, like I am ENFP, like I am. And he's like, it's hitting me like a ton of bricks. Like it's rough right now. Like I just want to go out and I can't. And I'm like, I love being in at home with my people, like my wife, sure. my kids, that nobody else I'd want to quarantine with. But I also like love travel. I love the ocean and I miss these types of things, you know? So, um, yeah. yeah, I'm super excited to have Tony on. I got to, um, she's been with kiss for a while now. Um, but I saw her at, um, creative and when was that? Jan last weekend in January. Cool. January. And, um, I, I typically sit in talks, you know, but sometimes it's like, just depends on the education or the content. Sometimes it's like super engaging. I love, like, I'm constantly a student and want to hear, but I like, when I heard her speak, I was like, I need to know what this lady's got going on. Cause she, you, I could tell she was passionate about it, that she was for the other people in the room and the content that she was giving. I was like, this one's a rock star. And so I like, oh. I was like taking notes and then I'm like looking her up. Like, does she use kiss? And I was like, hallelujah. She uses kiss. I'm like, we are grabbing a drink. And I was sitting right next to her husband. Actually. Um, we're grabbing a drink and, uh, we're chatting cause like you need to share with the world, like what you got going on. And so as we invested some time together, it's been an amazing, like not that long, right? It's like April, yeah. and it was like January where we really met. And, um, she let me in to like, just work with her on some album stuff. And then she showed up in like, she's a great student. She showed up and like implemented albums in just a little bit different way than she was doing in like, is just hit it out of the park like over and over again and her clients are loving it she's loving it i'm like this is amazing and i love like the northwest as well she is in uh washington state and um so it's just been great getting to know you a little bit and um, i'm excited for what you have to share with everybody here well i feel like my head just like exploded thank you <laughs> yeah. thank you so much for the, that's so cool. Um, yeah, it was truly, really a remarkable experience speaking at Creative Summit. It was super different than speaking at other workshops um, because so many people had kind of those like light bulb moments like you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's what I miss about educating in person or like one-on-ones is because you see them, you see the fire and like the light and the excitement come from things people are learning. And then you just like start feeding off that. Yeah. And so I think I that. I literally just sent an email out, which I don't even really use email communication a lot, like in terms of email lists, but I just sent one out that was like, Hey guys, I'm just letting you know, I had a really crappy week. Like yeah. did anybody else? And I could not believe how many like legitimate actual responses I got from that of people who were like, yes, I've had meltdowns. Thank you for telling me you have them, you know? Um, right. So I think we all get in that funk and especially in this quarantine, it's easy to like, oh, I just got to get past it. I got to, I got to have progress. I got to have productivity. Somebody said like the productivity pressure of quarantine. And I was kind of like, what? And I was yeah. like, wait, that's a real thing. Totally. So Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, I was like anything. I was just looking for anything today specifically. And so I got on my bike and I had a really bad ride and, and it was oh. like, that sucks. Um, cause it's like usually what gets my day going. I was riding with a friend, which is usually great. My bike was off. Like the calibration is a little bit weird. So I'm getting that solved and stuff, but it was terrible. And Maybe I chatted with like, him afterwards and it was good. What was that? Like a little bit of metaphor right there. Totally. The bike was off, like all the circumstances lining up were off everything. And I get downstairs to like, just like start my day and like have my morning time. And I look outside and it's snowing. I'm like, come on, like Indiana come through with me. One sunny day would have been really nice to have. Um, and so I literally like joked on Facebook and just said like, Hey, my house is for sale. I'm moving to Newport beach. Um, I'm out of here, you know, which is not even close to the truth. I love the Pacific ocean and, uh, Newport beach and all those things, but it's like, I, I, 
I could spend time out there. I'm just not likely going to live out there. Um, yeah. But you definitely have some fans on here, which is great to see. A lot of people from Creative are on here. This is super fun. But it is. It's okay to have off days, you know, and like um, I like there's days where I need a good cry. And it was good. I like um, in between lives today, I was just like, I'm going to go and uh, chill with my family who's all here, you know, thank God and stuff. And I got to hang out with my daughter and we watched uh, All American. We're just watching like a show together and just yeah. fun hanging out with her. Oh. It's my second time through it. She hasn't seen it. She's, she's like, hey, have you seen this? I was like, yeah, but I will absolutely watch it with you again. And we've been loving it. And I'm like, I, I, it's uh, Dory. Is that the, the person or the fish on uh, Finding Nemo? Yeah. The one that has, yeah. yeah, see, my memory. That's why I was going to refer to. I, my memory is so bad that sometimes I love movies because I don't remember what happens at the end. And so I'm like, hey, this yeah. is fun, you know. <laughs> and so we're watching it. I'm like, yeah, I've seen it, but I don't remember what happens. He's like, how do you not remember? Totally. That is totally me. And like, that's the only time I'm really grateful for my bad memory because there's a lot of things I wish I could remember. But like movies, TV shows, I'm like, yeah, let's watch it again. This is great. I have no idea what's going on. And I watched it, you know, not that long ago. So, um, yeah, someone said sometimes you just got to eat donuts and try again tomorrow. That's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I got the rest of the day that I'm trying to like, I'm not trying to pull out of it. Um, but, uh, it was awesome hanging with my daughter and she just like, right. before uh, I went live, she's like, I love you dad. And I'm just like, Oh, this is amazing. Like we were watching right. it. And, and I just said like, do you ever think about your wedding? Cause it, there was something on the show about like father or son type of a thing, you know? But, um, and she's like, no, I don't really think about my wedding. I was like, she goes, do you? And I was like, I think about it all the time. And she's like, really? And I was like, yeah, I photograph 500 weddings and you're the person when you be, when, you know, I was a photographer, let's see, she's 15. And so I became a photographer before she was born. Um, but it was like when she was born, I was like six or seven years where I started to get like, I was loving it. I was shooting tons of weddings, but it changed everything. When I had a daughter, I had a son before that, don't get me wrong. Like I look forward to my son's wedding as well. But when the, sure. when the dad walk, walks her down the aisle and like, there's just these moments, good and bad, like, right. I had, I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff happen with this father daughter stuff where I was like, like the, the, the father daughter dance and stuff like that. It's not about that. I totally get it. But it, like, it would make me super emotional because I had this daughter at home, you know? Yeah. And totally. so, um, it is just one of those things I was super grateful for and just got to talk with her a little bit about her wedding and, and stuff like that. So it was fun, but I've been looking forward to this really all day and um, I'm super excited to have you on here. Um, let's yeah, jump in a bit. Hey. So tell us a little bit about you. Um, what's your like business uh, name? Um, like, yeah, how long you been doing it? What do you love about it? Yeah. So well, like everybody else, you know, I'm a wedding photographer, but I decided kind of when I went into business, I really wanted to figure out a way to set myself apart. So um, I started my business, gosh, in 2004. So how many years mm -hmm. ago that is. And I was still in high school, like a lot of people um, who start businesses young. And, you know, I just did it part time for a long time. Um, and then when I went full time eight years ago, um, I just knew that there's so many people coming into the industry and I'm in the Pacific Northwest. We're like one of the major hubs of photographers in this mm -hmm. area. And I knew like I had a few idols that I was like, gosh, like, how do I do my business like them? And so I tried that for a year and like that didn't work. And then I started like really diving into setting myself apart and what that really looked like for me. And so I came up with, I actually came up with the slogan because I had seen another photographer that had a slogan and her slogan was, they call me the love -ographer. And I was like, that's genius. Like, I love that. And so I sat and I dwelled for like three days on like what my slogan could be. And then I came up with like, for the bride who doesn't just wear white. And I was like, wait a second. Like a lot of brides wear white and I don't want to <laughs> myself to them. Um, because I had shot one bride who wore a royal blue dress and it was awesome. Um, and so then I kind of just was brainstorming and playing with it. And what do I like? And what do I want to, and what do I want my clients to feel like? Mm. And kind of for the bride who doesn't just walk the aisle, she blazes her own trail is what came of that. Mm. And so through that, that's been a 
kind of mission of mine is to, it doesn't mean that the brides just get married in the forest or like windswept hair on the beach and piggyback rides and all those jazz photos that we see a lot of right now. Um, it does mean some of those things, but to me, it means um, blazing a trail that you are not like set with logistics on your wedding day and that you are a laid back person and you just wanna go out and do. And so that has really kind of helped shape my business and where I wanted to go. And a big part of doing for me has been being there for my clients because yeah. what I see so much in the industry and what when I was growing my business, I saw was all these complaints and questions and why it is, you know, I have bridezillas and all this stuff. And I was like, man, I don't want that. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want those stresses. I was kind of, to be honest, picking apart other people's businesses and figuring out where they were going wrong so that I could better shape my business and my experience that I'm giving to my clients. And I know people talk about client experience and all these things a lot, but to me, it's a reality thing. It's mm -hmm. not just like a client guide on my website that says, this is the experience you're gonna get with me. It's what they see happening on my social media. It's the experience mm -hmm. of, what they've heard about from their friends, not just like a quick word of mouth or, oh, my photos were great here. It's like their friends being like, no, you have to hire Tony's team. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how I really tried to set my business apart in my first like few years. And that's obviously grown and evolved and changed. And now in the last two years, we've added three photographers to my team. So now we're the Tony Christine team. They are not associate photographers. They are part of my team. Um, mm -hmm. so with that, like, I really wanted my brand to be known for experience. Like they wouldn't get anywhere else. Yeah. That's so good. I looked down at my necklace cause I was curious. I usually am really like intentional about which necklace. I just ordered a couple more from this company. They just have little sayings on it. They're in like Latin. A lot of them. This one is Essa Quam Videri. And it means, um, I probably totally like, I just act like I know how to speak it, but I don't really, <laughs> but it means, um, to be rather than to seem. And that's what you're talking oh, about. Wow. Like you're living it versus like, I don't say this and do this. It's like, no, I'm going, like, I'm going to create a business that I want to be a part of that other people want to be a part of. I'm going yeah. after specific clients that have a unique thing, but it's like also not niche down so much to where it's just like the bride that doesn't only wear white type of a thing or something like that. Yeah. You know, like there is super, certain niches that put us on a hill that nobody's on for a reason. And then, yeah. but then when that person finds you, it's like, wow, like you, they'll pay you whatever. Cause you're so niche, yeah. but you've done a really good job at also like, absolutely. Like I want to be different and I want it to work for me, even with like yeah. your associates and what you're speaking in, into that. It's like, there's not like Tony and her associates. It's like, no, they're part of the team and you know who yeah. the owner is clearly. And that's okay. Most people like to like, they're willing to pay extra money for the owner a lot of times and stuff right. like that. I've had associate brands and I totally get that. Um, but it's also like, sometimes I had them prefer an associate because the associate uh, photographer photographed their friend's wedding. They got referred, you know? And so like, I, I love that you're doing a great job. So one thing I couldn't get out of my head as you were talking though, um, was I swore to not do this anymore. So I got, I have to take one little step back and, and then we can talk about this like forever, but, um, okay. I want to make sure, um, that I want to hear just a little bit. I know a little bit about it, but I want people to know a little bit if you're willing to let us in about you personally. So I love the business side, but like, tell us about family, uh, where exactly yeah. you live. Um, if you're willing to share about one of my favorite yeah. things, your little cabin and stuff like that. Yeah, totally. Um, so I have been married for seven years and we have two little, little kids, both age and stature. They're very yeah. small. <laughs> my husband and I are both really short. I swear every time I like meet a group of people, at least one person walks up and was like, oh, you're so much like littler than I thought you were going to be. <laughs> And I'm like, really? Like what? I guess it's because I have like a big personality on Instagram, but I am short. My husband is perfect in every way and he's super hot, um, but he's not like the tallest of guys. Um, and so our kids are little, but I have a two-year-old and a, a four and a half year old. He'll be two, my little two-year-old will be two this month, which is crazy. And um, yeah, we live in Woodenville. So it's just outside of Seattle. It's kind of the little mini wine country of yeah. um, our area. And I don't even drink wine which is funny, but I hate it. I can't, I don't like any of it. Um, and then, yeah, we 
my husband grew up in a little town called Leavenworth in Washington that is a very like touristy Bavarian style village in the mm -hmm. mountains. It's like absolutely picturesque and stunning. Um, and so he grew up there, so he's always wanted to own property there. So a year and a half ago, we saved up and we bought a piece of property that was like super undesirable. Um, nobody wanted it. They were having a hard time selling it. It's on this like awful cliffside. 80% of it is like, you can't develop it. The guy put a well in like the completely wrong spot on the property. Um, so they, the real estate agent looked at us and was like, well, we do need an adventurous, like probably young couple to buy this property. And we were like, well, that's us. <laughs> um, we bought it and we've been saving, saving, saving. And we are building a really kind of modern contemporary style cabin on the river. Um, it's gonna be called the lookout, which we haven't even announced yet. Um, yes, Leavenworth is totally magical, Christine. Um, and it's gonna be called the lookout. We used to, my husband's designing the logo right now. Um, and it's just got these huge glass windows across the whole front. So every bedroom is along the front and the whole like living room is on the front. Um, the only thing on the back side is like the laundry room, a storage closet and one bathroom. So the whole like rest of the cabin is windows and it's right above the river and it actually cantilevers over the edge of the cliff side. I mean, it's more like a hill, but yeah. you know, it, uh, the river's right there and it's absolutely stunning. So right now yeah. it's called the cabin in Leavenworth. So you can look it up on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. It's been fun to follow along for sure. And I like dreamt about being there and just like doing vision work. I love like a, a place with a good view, you know? And, yeah. um, but yeah, the way you guys are um, fixing it up and stuff, making it yours, is just really fun, um, to, to see. And, um, what, what does your husband do? Um, I couldn't remember. I know we talked about yeah. it, but he's a, um, he's a UX designer for Microsoft. So he actually works on Microsoft teams, which is kind of the equivalent and more safe version of zoom. Um, yeah. and they've blown up a ton. So he has had I'm a sure. ton of work to do during this quarantine. So he is working from home right now, of course, just like everybody else. Um, we set up a makeshift office for him that is horrible. You would never want to see it. It's terrible. <laughs> um, but yeah, he's a UX designer. So when I first started out, it was so great because I'd be like, hey, I made this page. Like, look how beautiful it is. And I'd spent like 10 hours working on this page on my website. And my husband would be like, ooh, no. And in like 30 minutes, he'd go and like build a whole new thing. And I'm like, I just spent 10 hours on that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, now I don't, I don't use him. Um, but he did design like my brand and my logo and everything for me. So that was really cool. That's cool. I knew he was working for some big company. I kept thinking like every time I think of Seattle, I always think of like Boeing and like, um, yeah, Boeing and, and um, yeah, like there's a lot of big dogs up there and, and even like in Oregon, I know there's like a lot of sports, not as much in, in, uh, Washington, but, um, like uh, Adidas is up there in Columbia sports and stuff like that. But I think that's in Oregon, not too far, but, um, far enough. Um, but I knew he did something like that. So that's cool. Yeah. Um, I, uh, got to s meet him, um, as well as really Tony for the first time. Um, and, uh, it was a fun, um, creative was, it was a great spot and, um, just really different group than I'm used to, you know, very different. Uh, but I loved it and I love Devin. Um, and on um, in that team and stuff like that so it was fun but i was like so grateful coming home from that just with like i felt like wow like tony needs just more and more platforms because i'm excited uh so we can jump back into the business stuff i just wanted to um start there let people get to know you a little bit but um it. what i loved about your talk was um a lot of people have they're passionate about what they do um and and that is um that's that gets me engaged almost always as well. Um, but I could just tell it was different in a way that was like it's so needed. And uh, a lot of us like claim that re the relationship matters and stuff like that. Um, but it's one of those things like like my necklace is like to be rather than to seem. It's like yeah, I love my clients. Um, and I said that for a long time, and I did love all my clients. Uh, well, not all of them, but most of them. Um, right. And. But no, I when I was shooting 60 weddings, I wasn't able to serve them in the ways that, that you started preaching about. And I was like, this makes me like totally miss, um, like weddings and stuff like that. Um, I love, um, the engagement that you had, even like with the people that were there, like, I mean, I could see people taking notes and it was like, 
there was so much to know. And they ultimately, um, my fear was that they wanted to be you. And then at the end, you wrapped it with a bow, like better than I've seen, you know, like ever. You were just like, and the thing is, don't be me. Make your version of this. She talked about like yeah. gifting and like how to serve your clients so well. And then, um, it, and so she has all these ideas because she does it like, at every spot she has an opportunity and she totally leans in and and serves her clients well um but at the end they had notes on like what gifts she does and and these parties that she does and all this stuff and then you're like do this do your that. version <laughs> yeah do your version i was like that yeah. is so good because that is the truth it is like um we were made to be like this unique person yet we end up being like copies of other people you know and that's fine i'm drawn to certain people but i like want to read those things and then make it mine you know like my version yeah. of it and so it was so yeah. good and, and i was like i was loving every minute of it for people i say like hey you likely came to me because you've seen the experience i'm giving to my clients and you know i want you to do that too but I want, I want to help you develop something that isn't mm -hmm. just a carbon copy of what I'm doing. Because what mm -hmm. happens is, even though I might have great ideas, ultimately it won't mesh and it won't translate to your clients. They won't feel super blessed. It'll feel not right. It'll feel uncomfortable and not consistent with you and your brand. And so for me, like I hate cooking. I don't like hosting. That means I have to clean my house, yada, yada, yada. Um, and so I helped another photographer devise and come up with a plan to really bring her clients into her heart and who she is. And that was a bride's giving that doesn't happen at Thanksgiving. And she cooked this huge meal and she set out, she rented like platters and you know, just like made this amazing farm table in her home that yeah. isn't a massive mansion and did this dinner where they felt so blessed and taken care of. Do you think I could do that? Absolutely <laughs> not. That would not even be true at all to who I am. Um, people would be like, what is Tony doing? I'm not going, she would give me food poisoning. Um, so that doesn't work for me. So I love helping people, you know, really devise a plan that works for their brand and who they are, because that's what our clients respond to, is who we are. And that's what we want them to connect to. Yeah, it's powerful. I love that. So um, even even um, the title of this, you know, is the heart it takes to trailblaze your business. It's like I know your heart, and I love that that unique piece. I believe is because it's easy. Like for me, even when I educate, like do exactly what I say, and you will be successful. It's like yeah, but the only way you'll be successful truly, like true success, meaning not like not just financially, like feeling whole, feeling like you have purpose, and and how you do your purpose and how you're serving that is true success to me. Like the only way that it'll work in a sustainable way is if they do it in their version. And it's like a great reminder for me, like when I educate and, and when I um, just work with people and coaching them, I'm just like, here are the keys to your yeah. business, but take it and make it yours. Even, even what you've done in, in what we talked about with albums and stuff like that, yeah. you made it yours. And I was like, Holy smokes, like you hit it out of the park and all those clients, it's like, they're in, they're going to love it um so much you know like there were just clients that didn't have books at the time now they do and it's like it, it's a gift because it came from you in your version in your style and even like your associates were there and uh, or your team i should say were there and they served them in their way probably you know you like added it all up and you served them with a ton of albums of clients that you're going to photograph and it's a beautiful thing so let's get into like we in, we get the heart a little bit um and we've seen into that what is like what does it mean to like taking that into the trailblazing in your business yeah i mean so like when you and i were chatting about you know album sales and really like why i felt like gosh like i'm just not quite there with album sales where i want to be and with realistically the biggest part to me about, yes, I'm gonna make some great money off albums. Like to me, I'm a biz person. Like I get that we all have passion for this beautiful job we do and we're photographers and a lot of us are wedding photographers and that's beautiful and wonderful and you wanna create art, but we also wanna make money while we do this, right? So mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with admitting that. I'm okay with, you know, saying that. Like my brides know they're supporting my family and, you know, my life and that's huge. Mm -hmm. uh, so when, I, when you were like, Tony, like, I think you could really elevate your business with album sales. And I was kind of like, okay, but like, here's kind of what I'm doing. And I am pushing albums. And 
you were like, whoa, 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 wait, let's talk through like how you're actually serving them with albums. Mm -hmm. And I was like, huh, because I do, I have a, an album of my wedding photos sitting on my coffee table. And I can distinctly remember um, one time where I sat down in my house and Eric and I had just had like a blowout argument about, and it was right after we had our first child, not right after, but like within the first year. And I sat down and I looked at my album and I just like found myself smiling by the time I was finished with it. And like, where had all those like, you know, harsh, crazy, intense feelings where I was like, oh, how could he treat me like this? Like, how could he say those awful things? Where did those go? I don't even know. They like dispelled into the album and then out there side of butterflies. Like those feelings were like gone. And I was so reminded of like my love for him and why he chose me and I chose him. And when I thought about that moment and what you were kind of saying about like, how do we serve your clients with an album? I was like, whoa, I am missing something here. And so in order to, you know, really dive in, even though I hadn't started you know, this year's booking process with albums in my packages or anything like that, I was like, okay, I have this bride's party coming up. They're all my brides. I have 31 brides and 29 of them. Well, I have 35 brides total and 29 or 30 of them are coming to my home for a party. How can I serve them with an album without them being like, oh my gosh, Tony's just brought us to her house to buy an album. Cause I told you, I was like, that's not a sales night. This is a night where we bless them with a ton of gifts. I spend a lot of money on my brides and they get blessed with gifts at this Tony's favorite things night. And rather than being like, Hey, we're going to sell you albums. And here they are. Um, I talked with them about them. They had recently seen them on my Instagram. And then I offered them just the ones that were there, a really great discount that I normally wouldn't offer. Um, and said, Hey, if you guys, you know, want one, and these are the reasons why I think you're gonna want one. Chances are you're gonna love your wedding photos. Um, you should, we'll add one onto your package tonight. Let let one of us three photographers know and we'll write your name down and then we'll add a package on. And out of 24 brides that were attended the party because a couple couldn't make it at the last minute, um, 19 of them bought albums that night. And they, they like five of them said they wanted something more than just the fabric, you know, little one that they were going to, we were going to start with. And I was so blown away with how much they really felt like, wow, you know, Tony's here for us and taken care of. And then I get to like surprise them with their album layout first. And that'll be like a first glimpse of their photos. And I just really figured out that like, there's a process to this where, if I show them like I'm investing in them and like the time it takes to do it, they're going to feel really blessed and really taken care of. Yeah. Um, and that's a big part of it for, you know, specifically album sales, but also, you know, client experience. I can't, I can't say that, you know, I haven't, I haven't had a hard time during this coronavirus really at all. Not, not just financially. I mean, but with my business, like I see so many things where photographers are like, oh my gosh, I need a lawyer. It's time to lawyer up. My bride's threatening this. My, I can't do refunds, blah, blah, blah. And I haven't had one issue like that. And it's likely because of the relationship building and the trust that's there. And even if they can't use me next year as their photographer because I'm already booked, like I will figure that out with them. But mm -hmm. it's that really that client experience and that relationship and that trust where my clients are willing to say, hey, tonight I'm adding an album onto my package and that's you know $2,000 more that they're spending with me. And yeah. two days later we go on lockdown and I'm like, oh my gosh, are all the brides gonna take it back? You know, they already all paid retainers on these. And all like, you know, all of them are like, no, we're really excited. Multiple people sent payments in. Um, and so I think that that really building that relationship is where that trailblazing happens. And then you don't have the issues when hard times hit. Not even just coronavirus hard times. I'm talking like if someone passes away and suddenly they don't get to have their wedding anymore and their wedding has to cancel, what does that look like? What That's a hard time. So mm -hmm. what does that look like? How does that relationship extend through those things? Yeah, it's so good. Um, it definitely gets me excited just about business in general, but like about relationships and um, our industry. Like I, I believe truly that what we do for a living is we are photographers um, and that's totally fine. But it's a little bit like 
it locks us in, um, if we allow it to, to be a service industry and absolutely serve them with your craft. I'm not saying to not serve them with your craft, but what I'm saying is there is so much more and photography becomes a small percentage of what we do. If you do it in a way like having this heart, like Tony does, um, it's in times like this that it like really gets tested. And it is like, I mean, like I, I, I had a, a, a talk just a little bit ago, a live with an attorney. And it's like, I, I, it's good to have paperwork. It's good to have contracts. It's good to be the professional in the relationship and have everything like that. But if I had to hang it on one thing, I would much rather go to the relationship. And if the contract has to come out, I've, I'm, believe me, I've been, I've been sued yeah. and I've, I've been in tough situations and stuff like that. But um, what was amazing, like in every one of those instances, like I, I've been sued a, a few times at this point, um, judge away if you like, but um, it's just part of doing business for this long. Um, it's like uh, I regularly would like, um, the first time was not because it was like my family was involved and then a, a friend of mine was an investor and stuff like that. It was a lot of yelling and I was a very unhealthy individual. This last time we were just in negotiation and, and things like that. And it wasn't like we were suing each other. We were just like court could have been the outcome, but we knew it wasn't the best. So we'd go have a drink and we'd talk about it. And then we'd go to our attorneys and it was just part of it. But I, I still like, I will always remember those moments that I had with them um, around the table because that was like, it, it allowed us to leave each other on a good note. And um, it's when it's when it's tough, when, when things happen outside of even this virus, um, it tests kind of like what we really do for a living. And if we have relationships to hang it on like this, it is, they show up. Like today, I was like in a funk. You know who I reached out to was like clients of mine's that are friends of mine and like, Hey, yeah. I need some encouragement so that I can continue to show up and do what I love to do. And I know I love it, but I'm having a hard time. And they're just like, you always show up, you do, you know, they were just encouraging, but I was grateful yeah. that I had that. And you know, I can reach out to my family as well. And sure. but it's just like, it is a total gift. And I am honored to like just be here with you because I I'm excited for more and more people to hear this side of it. Cause I believe it allows them to show up in a unique way, right? Like, cause the way you have a relationship with your clients is different than how I will, different than how other photographers will. And that's the beautiful yeah. thing about it. That's the unique thing. Cause when people refer you, you know what they talk about? They're like, you have to use Tony because, and then right. it's probably and like, sure, they could talk about a photo. That's totally fine. But I'll bet it's not always not, you know, it's not about that. And when oh, I was referred to definitely oh, time. Yeah, that are like, oh my gosh, are their photos even good? Like, but why are they getting booked so much? It's because like they're really good business people or they've got great personal skills or something like that. I mean, you can be the best photographer out there and not get booked because you don't know how to interact with people or you don't, you literally like every, you view every person as just a contract. And it's like, how many, yes, folks, don't do business. Don't be a photographer without a contract. I yeah. am a fledged like business person. I am all about being professional. But what I will say is those contracts are not those people. Mm -hmm. So what people say, well, what does your contract say? I'm like, well, sure. We all know that we can fall back on the contract, but what are we doing to serve the person when either hardship hits or even before that? Like, that's why I take my marketing so seriously because I want them to see they're being served through every piece of marketing that I do. That's um, right. And that, that's huge. Yep. Yeah. That's the, I mean, it's such a, um, we, we talk about this all the time at kiss, you know, um, like we get copied all the time. Like since we've started, we were the only company that was like, we were the world's simplest book company. That's what we, um, that was our claim. We went and occupied a hill that did not exist in our industry. Um, and then it was like, Hey, this whole like simple thing is a thing, you know? And so if you look around now, there's tons of book companies that like, we make it simple and all that stuff. Totally fine. Makes us want to be innovative. And there's times where I'm like, I'll be having a day where I'm just like, is like our, does our culture matter? It's, it's the measure, the things that are hard to measure. Like does the relationships that I, I have relationships with like every lab, almost every lab, like um, lots of book companies. And they're always like, what are you doing, Sean? Like, and I'm like, I just literally, it, we're not, a, we're not publicly owned companies. And I just want to know how we can serve photographers better. There's plenty to go around. If you have some trick and, and secret sauce that you're putting in your books, I'm not here to view that. And I've had people say like, 
yes, you are. And I'm like, I literally <laughs> could care less how you make your books. Like, and if yeah. I want to, I can just order one, cut it in half and figure it out. It's not that big of a deal. You know, we are going to continue to make amazing products. You are going to continue to be an amazing photographer, but that doesn't differentiate you enough mm -hmm. to compared to what you can do with these relationships. And that's what I love is like, that is, it's so life giving to have relationships in the industry with your clients, because it's like, you get to go to work and serve like friends. And it's yeah. a beautiful thing. Like how many of your clients become friends? I'm sure tons of them because they like fall in love with you because um, yeah. of these relationships, yeah. you know, it's like awesome. And if there's, I mean, a lot of people, it feels like almost like a fluffy conversation to have that like, Oh, build that relationship, like do something great in your client experience. And then photographers are looking at me going like, but what, but what, what does that mean? Like I'm all about the tangible things, like the tangible ideas I can give people to say like, this is what you need to do. Um, and like, you know, we were just talking about, it needs to be something that is within your own brand and who you are as a person. But like one of the best tangible ways to really dive into your experience and that isn't just a guide that says the Tony Christine experience, here's what it is on a platter. Like your experience isn't typed up in your guide, folks. That's not what your experience is. That's how you do business. Mm -hmm. But your experience is start to finish from the time they inquire, how quickly did you get back to them? Did you jump on the phone with them? Do you send a personalized video? You know, are you waiting a day? Did you ghost them because you're not available that day? You know how many times I've had, I send a referral to somebody because I'm not open for that date. And then they come back and they say, oh, they're booked too. I'm like, wait, 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 one second. Let me go find you another one that's open that day. And then nine months later, I get another inquiry, either that same person or their friend. Like, oh, this is the person I wanted to book, but she helped me find somebody. Like, are you kidding me? That's experience. So like, one of the most tangible things you can do is I print out my workflow chart. I literally print out from the time somebody inquires to the time I, if I book them, deliver their gallery and after. Like, okay, they inquire, we had a consult, they, um, you know, I sent out their contract, they signed the contract, they paid their retainer. Like think about all those little tiny things. We did their engagement shoot, I posted a sneak peek, then I sent them the engagement gallery, then we did a timeline prep for their wedding. Like think about all the steps in your process with a client, write them all down, and then highlight where you're providing a positive experience for them. So if I highlight, Oh, I got back to them really, really fast. Great. So then by the time you show up at their engagement shoot, what else have you done to make their experience really great? Okay. Mm -hmm. I do a party where my brides all come to my house and um, they get showered with gifts. It's called Tony's favorite things night. I literally do the whole, like you get this and you get this and you get this. And I like Oprah shower. for a night. Yeah. Um, and they leave feeling so blessed. And yes, I literally said to them at my party, you guys, I choose to spend my marketing dollars on you. I don't advertise on the not. I don't pay other photographers for referrals. I don't pay wedding coordinators to be on their preferred vendor list. I pay for really rad gifts for you guys because I believe in you, word of mouth, and that my marketing dollars should go back into the people I care about most. Mm -hmm. And when I say that to them, they feel really taken care of. They know my heart and they know that I'm not, I rely on them to be my brand ambassador. So then the party mm -hmm. happens and then I'm looking and I'm like, okay, wait, where in this workflow chart, how, do I not have something highlighted where I'm providing a really great experience? So that means, oh man, we've gotten all the way to the wedding, which is nine months after the party. Okay, so what do I do, you know, three weeks before the wedding to give them a really great experience? And what do I do right after the wedding? Because they're okay, their photos are being delivered. That's a big one. But how do I make that a really good experience? That's not just, I'm sitting here and I'm so excited. Here's your gallery. What do, I'm mm -hmm. sitting here waiting to hear. What do I do to make that a really cool experience for them? And by doing that, and looking through, you can craft a real experience that they will not find anywhere else. Yeah, and that's, that's super powerful. You can sit down and do right now. Yep. Yeah. Someone said, uh, thank you for your support and me not wanting to do a guide. I just want to be in contact with my clients every step of the way. And it's like, you can do a guide or not. It's totally up to you. It's your style. You don't have to, but there's so many different ways of doing that. Um, we had, um, some ambassadors, um, just come and stay at the house here and, um, we wanted to show them the lab and just like, you know, 
do similar things that you're doing. Um, but they're a photographer, ambassador, friends of ours. And, um, we spent some time, we like, I cooked him dinner one night and stuff like that. I just loved it. And, um, it was a blast, but, um, do you know who Greg Fink is? He's a, a friend, he's from France. Um, and great photographer. Um, his wife is, um, a, a dressmaker. Um, and they, they both live in Paris and it's like this, like they're, they're these like super creative photographer or one's a photographer, one's a, a dressmaker. Anyway, he was here at the house. And, um, he was new as an, as an ambassador at the time is years ago. And, um, he started talking about what you were referring to and, um, he couldn't under, he, he couldn't, um, translate, he speaks English really well, but he couldn't translate, um, like the opportunities. So he kept calling them moments. Um, and he was talking about his timeline and he's like, and then you have a moment here and you have a moment here. And what he meant was opportunity, but we've, we continue to use the word moments today because ah, it is, there are these moments. It is, there are these moments that we have and so when i've laid out the timeline that i even showed you like here's when you serve along the way and stuff you've already done this but where to do it with albums is what i was referring to um wow. a lot of that came from that conversation with him it's like they are opportunities they are moments because it is again it's what you serve them with is your photography but even think about that entire timeline and how often are you actually photographing it's a small window compared to all the other conversations that you can have with them and so i love that because it is like this right it's like the experience is this and you only shoot like here and here during the engagement and during the wedding it's like it. it's amazing yeah. I don't know who this is because it just says Facebook user. I'm going to look over here, but someone oh, said, uh, love having Tony as my mentor. That's awesome. Rachel, you're uh, amazing. Rachel. Yeah, it's Rachel. Um, so, Am I yeah. allowed? I have a question. Am I allowed to like talk money a little bit real quick? Yeah, yeah. That's why we're on the private group. I knew we'd probably likely talk a little bit about money and be open to that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty open book, especially with people who I mentor and stuff. Like I told Rachel that right when we started mentoring together, I was like, hey, like if you have a question, like I will show you my financials. I will talk mm -hmm. through that. I will I will tell you what how much I spent last year on my business, you know, whatever, or how much I brought in. But one of the really cool things was that I that I loved about kind of going through that like sales process and how to serve a client well with albums was you really encouraged me, like Tony you're missing the mark on albums. And I was like, okay, but is this just gonna cause me more time and effort and uh, I don't know, I don't know. And I was kind of resistant to it. And then I just thought, okay, if I can do this, this is going to bring my, my business more money this year without having to get more clients and more inquiries. And how often are we like so stuck on, oh, I'm only shooting 12 weddings this year. I'm only shooting 25 weddings. Good Lord, y'all, 12 weddings to 25 weddings. That's a lot of weddings, okay? We don't need to be shooting 50 weddings a year to make the income we need to make or want to make. Yeah. And when you encouraged me in that and you kind of showed me this way that that KISS really does strive to serve clients throughout the process, I had already kind of missed the, the, the front chunk of that with my current 2020 brides. And so that's why I did the, you know, the sale of them at my um, my bride's night. But what that has done has, I mean, when you told me I could add, you know, X thousands of dollars to my business this year, I really highly doubted it. I was just kind of like, oh, there's that's that's just not feasible. Like, I mean, I charge quite a bit for to shoot a wedding. I mean, I feel like I do. Um, but I don't, I just don't think that's gonna, you know, translate. I don't think people are gonna pay that for albums. And then I sent out my first one. I um Sean let me order, you know, three samples and he's like, I'm gonna help you expedite these so that they're at your party. And I was like, okay, awesome. Well, then I was like, well, I've already, I ordered these three albums for myself, for my perfect stack, like what I wanted it to look like and what I want my clients to purchase and how I want them to view it. And then I, I designed those and I was like, might as well send these to the clients, just to, they, these past clients to see if they want it. Off of one sale of that, the first one came back, she's like, oh my gosh, this is such a great gift idea. My you know, husband's birthday is coming up. And I'm thinking like, any husband, does they, does he want an album for his birthday? Year? Like a $3,000 <laughs> album? Is that really what he wants? And then you want to know what? He cried when he got it. Okay. She ordered it. First of all, that was $3,000 in my pocket because it was like a $3,800 album or something. And then when the other bride never got back to me about the album that I sent her, I was kind of like the one designed, meaning I sent the really beautiful design. I was kind of bummed. I was like, man, I didn't hear back. Oh, well, 
the I shared it all. I took a little mini tour of it on my Instagram because I couldn't share the one I had sold because she was giving it as a gift to her groom for his birthday. And so I shared the other one. The mom of the bride wrote me and she wanted to spend $2,800 on an album. So on samples, I made over 5K. And then in the last six weeks since quarantine has started, I have made $11,500 in album sales. And that is not like me being all salesy and like, oh, you need to come and I'm going to give you this discount and all this. That is me showing people the value of them, how beautiful they are, telling my own story about how it softened my emotions during an argument with Eric, sharing about it on my Instagram, and then designing a beautiful album and sending it to clients and saying, look, like you could have this in your home. And how insanely amazing has has that been for our family and peace of mind going forward in these you know unknown times like mm. it's really incredible when you can when you serve your client what you can do with that and that's why i just love i didn't even know kiss had like these awesome sales goals for the longest time you guys offer email templates like people why are we not tapping into these and you guys get to copy and paste email templates like that's amazing yeah what a gift. I mean, this is a gift to me, like you sharing this as well. Cause there's times where I'm like, am I talking to a wall? Because sometimes I'm like, I, I mean, the last few years of my, uh, my career, uh, the last two years, I only shot five weddings. I only took five weddings cause I was the current CEO of kiss and I had co-founded it and it was busy. I loved still shooting. Um, uh, we were shooting super high end weddings, but we would shoot five weddings and we would clear over uh, $200,000 a year because they were $25,000 weddings. And then we would sell them like 20 to $30,000 in albums. That is like the elite of the elite. And I do right. not, I'm not, yeah, I'm yes. not preaching like go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not preaching like everyone go and raise your prices. That's not what I'm preaching. But what I am talking about so many times is like, you're like, I have, I think you said at the time, you're like, I have 35 or 36 weddings and I think I have a 37th one, um, um, like in the, in the, um, making and stuff like that. And I was like, so I looked at your account and I was like, you're selling like 60% of your clients albums based on those numbers, you know, on, on what you shared with me. And I was like, cool. Like I I'm in. And so I was like, you're leaving. I don't remember what I said, but it was probably like 20 to $30,000 in albums. And it's like, and you've I, I was so skeptical, Sean. I was so skeptical. <laughs> what do you mean? Like, I came home and told Eric, I was like, Sean thinks I can make like 20 grand. And I was like, there's no way. There's no way. I had the whole mindset, which so many of you guys have, that is my clients won't spend that on an album. I hear it all and the I, time. I understand it. I understand it. Do you know, I am literally designing an album for another client who got married four or five years ago, whose photographer apparently doesn't offer albums even currently. And I, they're paying me $2,000. They didn't even like pay that much for their photographer. Yeah. Okay. They will. And the ones that will, not every client will, and that's okay. But get fired up about how you can serve the ones that will well. And they will see the value in it when you feel and see the value in it too. Yeah. Yeah. They said, did you pre-design for all your past clients? Um, that's something we talked about. I think like it depends. You can yet <laughs> yeah i know it's crazy that's a thing so like two years ago i've said this statistic tons of times in talks and you guys have heard me say it and i'm just gonna say it again because again i think i need to say things a lot of times um sometimes for it to just be like yeah that's a real thing think about this someone just reached out to me and said hey i use your um statistics not my statistics like wedding wire from 2018 in 2018 i know the statistic well because i've preached about it for years now um year and a half. And uh, it was like 78% of weddings were photographed for under $2,000. So if you think of like, think about this for just a second, like just dream this up, you own a album company, right? And you get the statistics back from this, like one of the only legitimate ones, because there's, you know, they, they go to public records, they do the work to get like good statistics. Um, so there's 2.2 .2 million weddings in the USA in um, 2018, 2.2 .2 million. That's awesome. Um, seventy-eight percent of them were photographed for under two thousand dollars. So I'm like, okay, I own an album company. Five hundred thousand of those weddings were photographed from zero to five hundred dollars. They better not have an album. Like, 
unless it's like some consumer brand album. And then the statistics of that say that they don't as well. Like a lot of people start 70 to 80% of albums that get started in the consumer world do not get printed. Um, another half of million. So 500,000 more got photographed between 500 and a thousand dollars and another 500,000 got photographed between a thousand and two thousand dollars. I'm an album company. Like I'll, I could literally shift like, pivot what I'm doing and I can go into a consumer brand, which costs me more money. I understand that, but I can be like some of these other companies that offer, you know, professional and consumer brand and just yeah. chase a way bigger market than what our professional photographers are doing. But I'm like, I'm in love with the consumer or, or sorry, with the professional that is serving that consumer and I'm more in love with them. So I, I regularly like try and put things into order and I'm like, I'm in love with creative entrepreneurs. I am a creative entrepreneur. And so I'm yeah. like, the ones that will sit here and listen will be successful and that will make my heart so happy versus like a consumer brand to me it is a, it, some people could get totally excited about it for me. I'm just like, I could, I could fall in love with like the, the relationship and know that I'm like helping their marriage and stuff like that. But it's so different. I'm so much more in love with like the creative doing that on, on their own behalf. Break that down a little bit for some people who, don't necessarily like see that high level, like what you're talking about, like vision, that like relationship there. You guys, like what that says is that I get to go to my clients and say, nope, you can't order this album on your own. Sure, you could go to these other companies and order one. Order a Snapfish album, see if you like it. It's yeah, 40 totally. bucks, you know, or yeah, there's some album companies out there that make really pretty ones, but they don't have warranties. In a few years, they're gonna kind of yellow. I actually bought one from a lab at the time that said they were professional, that they didn't sell to our clients, mm -hmm. that they only were closed off to, you know, the, the average consumer. Right. So I bought it two and a half years later, my photos are separating from the page and the leather is separating from the cardboard that they glued it to. And I literally can see the glue pattern on it. And it was yeah. like this beautiful leather album and it was of my wedding. And you know what? They sell now to anybody. Any of my past clients can go and order it. So yeah. I love that I get to say to my clients, nope, you cannot get this. You have to show your business license, your website, all of that. And I tell that to photographers who aren't licensed and insured. Nope, sorry, unless you go get you know a business license and you have a website and stuff, can you use Kiss Books? Yeah. And that is a massive selling point to our clients, you guys. Like I feel yeah. like that, I want people to hear from that statistic you were just saying, like, we we want to serve them and so we get to tell them that hey you can't get this on your own i'm here to design it and make it look absolutely beautiful we're going to put some of your favorite photos in there and then i'm going to tell the story of your day yep yeah i'm getting some questions that i'll get to in just a second but um it really is like um we're going to continue to do it this way you know we um are for creative entrepreneurs and i love the just like seeing like a story like yours where it was just like, you were doing great. Like you had hit certain goals in your business and, and I was excited for those as well. But I was like, there's always room for improvement. Right. And for you, I was like, you're doing really well. Um, yet there is like a lot of room for in the album specific, you know? And so I, I threw out some numbers. Like I know you can, because I just, I had just heard your talk and like some of the accomplishments that you had made and you shared some of your like personal goals and, and some things that you were like, uh, well, you were supposed to celebrate and you hadn't at the time, but, um, I haven't rewarded myself for the goal that I had accomplished, but since I have literally, it you, was have. Because you were like, have you done it yet? Have you done it yet? And I went and, and I finally did it. I finally, what did I, I congratulated myself and I fulfilled yes. the reward I had set for myself when I hit a certain goal. And I, yeah. did. I went to my wife cause I was like, okay, I've said this a few times to Tony. Um, but like, I, I tend to celebrate everything, but I, I never want to miss out on a celebration, especially if somebody else has like hit that goal. And so I was like, am I being over the top? And this is my wife who's like frugal and like, like her vision for one quarter last year was to celebrate because she struggles with it at times. Um, she's a nine on the Enneagram and like cares so much for other people. It has a hard time celebrating herself. And so it was like almost last year she was just like celebrating. Oh, I loved it. I'm like, I'm in, I love celebrating. And so I'm like, am I being over the top with Tony? And she's like, no, she needs to go get that. You know? And I was like, okay, good. If you're on my team, then I'm going back and I'm, I'm going to say it again. Right. It was so I fun to get that. I even felt like, gosh, it sounds so, I don't know if it's like materialistic or shallow or something, but y'all like, 
I own a designer bag now for the first time in my life. Like I own a designer bag that in a nev in a million years, I would have never thought that I would either own or buy myself because it seemed so ridiculous. Like it seemed so silly, but here I had set this goal when I was eight months pregnant with my son. I was like, man, if I like, too. this amount, I'm going to like buy myself something like stupid and extravagant. And my husband was like, well, what is it going to be? And we were literally like walking around the shops of whatever in Vegas. What are those places called? Like where all the designer oh, ones are. At the I'm not like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not like a designer. Like, oh, I don't own a bunch of really, really super, you know, high end stuff. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to buy that blacked out, like gorgeous bag. Where am I even going to carry this? I don't even know. I'm not like throwing my mother's diapers and like food pouches in it. But you know what? I was like, forget that. I'm going to take this when I go to the mall and stuff now. So when I hadn't bought it yet and I, I had just found out like, oh my gosh, I reached that goal. And then for like four months, I sat on it and I was like, well, I reached the goal, but like, I'll buy it one day. Like I'll buy it. Like we're building a cabin right now. Like, I don't that know. That was I the thing you said. Yeah. You're like, we, we yeah, got this like, cabin and it's like the same price as this part of the cabin. And so I told my wife that too, like maybe they could just do that. Like I, I want to support them in any way I can, but like, I love celebrating, you know? And she's like, yeah. Nope. Like she still has to do it. And I was like, okay, if my wife is saying it, like the one that like struggles with celebrating, I'm like, I can push again. And I'm yeah. like, you'll get, you'll get the floors in your cabin too. Like you need yeah. to go to like, we, we will serve the rest of your clients with albums and we will get both of these taken yeah. care of. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> and now my husband, he was like, well, sure, you should just go do it. You should go do it. And then every time I was like getting ready to go do it, he'd be like, okay, but like right now, are you sure? And then finally he was like, we're doing this. Like, doesn't even matter. We're toddlers in tow. Like we went to the mall and we just bought it. And it was, it was actually really fun. Like it just was fun to fulfill, you know, that dream. And that's why actually Rachel, who I think is in here, um, I had her sit down and say like, you need to have like what you need to survive, like financially, your take home, you know, money. Then you need to have like what your goal is, like whatever that goal is. And then you need to have like a, oh my gosh, goal. Like what if I hit this goal this year? Okay. So you've got these three, you've got a minimum, you've got what you want to hit. Um, you got one fancy bag. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. One fancy bag club. I'm going to make that a thing. And then you've got your goal. That's your, oh my gosh, wow goal. And then you need to set a little bit of a reward for each one. So mm -hmm. the minimum goal, eh, you don't get to buy that camera you really wanted this year or, you mm -hmm. know, that one lens you were like stoked about. But that minimum, that that goal that you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to hit this year. I'm working towards this. I'm on track. I can do this if I hustle. Then set a reward for yourself. And then that, oh my gosh, goal, that one, you set a, a real reward. It's not just like a, this is going to help my business grow reward, like just a new lens. Do something a little bit frivolous because that goal should be big enough that it is going to be hard to achieve it. And you have to work for it. Yeah. And so at the end of the year, when you start looking through and you've set those tangible rewards for each of those three goals, and we're talking high level, it's like a, a financial goal, like just X amount of dollars, like that's it. Not like all these little goals and things and I want to blog more this year and all that. That's not what I mean. I mean a financial goal. Then you get to reward yourself with that because it does, it makes a big difference. Like to have that moment of like, wow, I did it. And then I, now I get to throw that bag over my shoulder and be like, yeah, I did that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I struggle with it. Cause I, again, I used to like celebrate everything. Um, and so like, there's times where I'm like, what should I celebrate? It's those big goals, you know? And so like, I had my eyes on like, I'm a shoe and bag guy as well, but, um, I'm like, yeah. also I wear like a ton of old Navy clothes because I know they're right. like super affordable and like I'm hard on clothes but I, I look at like Gucci shoes regularly you know and um, I'd fallen in love with these shoes but I was like I just can't I mean there's plenty to celebrate but again I'm like it's Tuesday let's celebrate you know it didn't matter like I, I would celebrate anything and then um, this last Christmas um, my wife got them for me and she's just like it's time you know and I was like and so when I put them on, there's so much that I think about when it, when it comes to it, you know, and I'm just like, I try not to be super flashy because I don't want it to make me who I am. And like the vehicle that I drive, I don't want to look back and be like, I, that's who I am, you know, is like these Gucci right. shoes and that vehicle that I drive or whatever. So I struggle with it. Um, but I also like, it's so worthy of a celebration. When I put it on, I remember that. I remember like that she wanted to celebrate what we've accomplished together. Yeah. And I feel good when, when they're on my feet, like they, they don't feel much different than my life 
like Cole Hans, you know, like which are like they look the same, like they're both white leather shoes and they're about, you know, four times the cost, you know. And um, but I'm like, I feel different when I put them on. And for whatever reason, there is like that, it's worthy of celebration. So I love that you said of my clients like got excited with me when right. I posted my little boomerang of me taking it out. They were like, go Tony. Like we've been following you for you know eight years and like to see your business reach your goals and like these things was so cool. You guys, these are clients who are paying me and basically paying for my reward and <laughs> they're congratulating me. Yeah, Like that's really cool. Yeah. yeah Sorry, yeah. I don't want to talk before we get to questions. I know we've got to no, do that yeah, too. Yeah, it's a gift. Yeah, we're right at, at an hour and we'll, we'll get through these couple. But yeah, I love that. And it, it, it just goes to show that like when I wear even my Gucci shoes and I'm speaking at an event, like these are photographers that buy books off of me, you know, and I'm wearing yep. Gucci shoes, you know, they're like, you should be wearing Gucci shoes. Like, I'm glad that you flew first class here or whatever. You know, I, I get bumped to first class. I don't buy first class hardly ever, but they, they, I love it when they celebrate me. You know, I'm always a little bit concerned, like, should I wear these? You know, and they're like, absolutely, you should wear those. Like, you yeah. deserve it or whatever, you know, they don't actually deserve it, but you know what I mean? So I love that. And and when you when you sent me that video, I was like, I'm calling her. Like I'm so excited finally. Cause I, I was like, I'm, it was like six weeks later or something. I'm like, how long is it gonna take? Like for her to go get that first, you know? Yeah. yeah. So we'll we'll grab these couple of questions and we'll wrap up. But um I think it is the same. Um is Rachel? Yes. Uh, she who you work with. Yeah, she just said so. Uh, where I am in Massachusetts, um, all tangible items are taxed. Um, this all won't show up, but if I had an album in a package, the whole package is taxed. I feel that is such a burden on my clients paying all that money on tax, but maybe I'm wrong. So you're not wrong. Um, that's the, that's one of the words I try to avoid. Um, even like sales, I try to avoid, are you serving them or selling them something? Um, they can be hand in hand, but same thing. It's not wrong. Um, there's a lot of truth in this, but, um, I don't know every state's law. Um, but the way that you, there is work, I would just work with your CPA on how to word it because you can say like, um, the album is in the package, then you invoice them separate. Um, you, if you put a credit in, there's different ways around it. So they don't have to pay it. Um, and you can do it as two separate invoices to make it to where only the tangible items, because I don't want you to be taxed on the four or yeah. five, whatever the amount is that you charge 2000 to like whatever, 5,000 or something like that. Um, on, on the service piece, um, you can separate it in most states. And the thing is, even if you didn't, um, if you work the, the dollars out, um, you serve your clients really well and the referrals and everything that you get from the album as well is, is insane. It's you're creating an experience. Again, the photography is such a small part of what you do. Although we in our industry make it a huge part of what we do. It feels like it cause it's the craft that they're actually, they feel like they're even hiring us for. Um, and that's where they start. I mean, they go and they look at your website, they go and look at your Instagram, but, um, what they end up hiring you for, um, consciously or subconsciously is like, do I want Tony at my wedding? Like, do I want the experience of Tony there? That's what can separate you from other people. But it's also like, yeah, we want to know that you take good pictures. There's no doubt about that. Please take good pictures, but you have to hit it out of the part with the experience. Sean, you might know the answer to this, but what if it is a gift? What mm -hmm. if it's considered a gift? So you can say, you know, on your website or on your client guide that, you know, your PDF or whatever that you send that, you know, a, an album gift is included or they don't even know it's included and you send them that as a gift and you say, hey, this is the size and gift that you come with. But let me know if you want, you know, a leather or a different style and yeah. then you would send that separate invoice. So it's not yeah. like it's actually connected to your wedding package. That's usually the way that you can do it. it just depends on the state is like you um, do it okay. as like what is included in this is this and this isn't a product. This is just a design that gets you started. So what I've included is like a highlight reel and that's like a tangible product. It could be invoice them separately because it is a product. I mean, that is how all companies do it. If there's a service that they do, you know, like whatever it is, it could be like a delivery or um, actually like food services and things like that. They just separate it out so that you pay taxes and you're actually only supposed to tip on certain things as well like if you buy like a nice bottle of wine they don't expect that and they don't get taxed on it the same as if they do the rest of the food and stuff there's all kinds of ways talk to your cpa but even if you got taxed for the whole package 
the way that like that I've shared with Tony on how to serve. And you can just look down on, on this Facebook page. Actually, if you just scroll down, I have like it all broken out and we're going to continue to educate on that. It still works out in your favor and your clients. Imagine this. I don't know what you charge for weddings, but let's say you charge $3,000 for a wedding. You show up, um, you photograph for eight hours and you give them their images, right? That's like minus an album, what it would look like. You give them their images. The thing is, statistics are showing us that they're not doing hardly anything with it. So was it even worth the $3,000? I'm not saying that your photos aren't worth it, but if it's Facebook that's reminding me of my wedding, um, of course, I'm going to remember it. But if if I don't have that that moment that Tony shared, which is a total gift, and, and I that's the first time I had heard that story about you and Eric, and you looking through those images and just remembering, you literally, the albums, I believe... This is not the sole purpose of them. They can literally save marriages. You can set into place like when you give them their album, I, I would say something along the lines of like, before you go to dinner to celebrate your one-year anniversary, um, I really want you to start this tradition of like sitting down, grabbing a glass of like wine or bourbon or champagne or whatever it is. It could just be like, it doesn't matter. Um, just sit down and flip through your book. And remember your favorite parts of it. Share that with one another. Remember what you saw each other, how you saw each other on that day. And that is really what I do for a living because I can I can tell you this. One year in, they're going to enjoy it. Hopefully, really love sitting down. Five years in, seven, eight years in, they will have had financial arguments. They will have had arguments about their kids and that I, I, rate, I I'm a different parent than my wife is. And we, we argue about that and, and times have gotten tough and like, you know, you could have thrown the divorce word out and all kinds of stuff like that. But the thing is, I get the chills because when you go back to that moment and you've helped set this tradition in where they sit down and they flip through the book and like, Hey, I remember this guy. And like, you used to dream about like, like changing the world. And that's who I fell in love with. How do we get back to looking at each other this way? Like it is an absolute gift. You know what I just decided it on a screen. It's so different. If they look it out on a screen, it, it is different. I can promise you that. Yeah. I decided that kind of along the lines of what you were saying, like look at it and tell each other what you loved about that day. Um, and this is kind of a, a secret sauce thing, I guess it's, it's, it's a way that I can deliver an album and set myself apart. I decided I was going to include two greeting cards in their album package that are blank and then it's going to say each year on your anniversary you are to write each other a letter and put it back in your album to read the next year oh that's that's solid right there i'm taking that I, by the way I, that is genius yeah. um that to me it's not only marketing it's the power of what you're giving that mm -hmm. couple and we can say theoretically it's going to save marriages, which it very well basically did for mine. I mean, we weren't like having an all out drag out, like I don't want to be married to you anymore argument, but you guys, our images have so much power. And if we truly believe that, then we need to make that experience happen for our clients. And so mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put two really nice greeting cards in and then instruct them on a little sheet that says, Hey, every year you got to put in two. I don't even care if they're sticky notes, like put them, put back in blank ones. And you got to write them each year on that night, like a couple of sentences about your favorite memory that year or something like that, because it will make that. And, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to come back year after year and be like, we just had the most amazing time over our anniversary. Thank you. Like they are, they're going to talk about it to one another. I mean, you were literally creating communication channels by doing this type of stuff. Like you are helping, especially the guy out, well, <laughs> like I'm, I'm putting him in a box, but that's just how it is. Like yeah. he's going to, get lucky that night in like in a different way because it's like as it should be right like they're going to get back to that moment where they're like hey i love you i don't like you all the time but i love you right now because this is what we signed up for you know and like how can we do this another year and like how can we get back on the same page in these areas of our life it's like it's hard but typically communication is one of the biggest problems in marriage. It's one of the biggest problems in every relationship. And it's typically the lack thereof. It's not that we're not communicating. Sometimes the communication comes across as screaming. It's that we're not hearing each other. 
And it's moments yeah. that we sit down and stop and like think about it, that we can be aware of who we're being. Cause it's like, what is it like to be on the other side of me as your husband? Like yeah. who's ever asked that? Not many people on the planet have asked that, but I can learn so much from that so that I can show up for her and be heard by her. It's gold in the card thing. I'm totally utilizing that. That is amazing. That is so good. An example of how I want people to think outside the box in terms of client experience. Like mm -hmm. it's just, all see on everybody's websites like oh working with tony the tony christine experience you guys my guide page literally says that the tony christine experience okay so we all use that word but what is your experience mm -hmm. like what yep. actually is it like yep. you've got to think outside the box yeah i've definitely i've asked questions like uh what who do you who are you becoming what are you going to be that's been my thing is like well, who are you becoming they're like so i'm like write it on your to be list and they're like i'm going to be intentional and I was like, yeah. I'm totally fine with you being intentional, but what are you being intentional with? You can tell me you're intentional all day, but it doesn't matter. Like write out the next word. I'm being intentional. I'm going to be an intentional father. I'm going to be intentionally connected. It's just a word. What is the Tony experience? What are, what are you intentional about? It's fine. I want you to have an experience. Tell me more about that experience and then go hit it out of yeah. the park. And, you know, then, you know it ends like this, like with this package, with this album in, in the, well, I, I was reading package, but like with an album delivered at the finish line and then it keeps going a year later or like probably eight, eight or nine months later after they get their album, their one year anniversary, it's still part of the Tony experience, but you're handing it off to them. Like, here you go now serve each other well in your marriage that I'm totally for. And then they'll do it again and they'll do it again. It's like, it's such a gift. That is the experience right there. Mm -hmm. And if you take a step back, instead of writing it out and like, just like, here's the, the, you get, you get the Tony experience. It's like, yeah, you do. Tell me about that. Like, look at every part of it. Here's all these moments and opportunities that you get to serve over and over again. It's, it's, it's unreal. That was a good one for sure. I just did the same thing. Oh, that, that's sorry. That's the wrong one. Um, do you include... <laughs> It's like another one. We got bags everywhere. Um, <laughs> do you include albums or album credit in your packages? So this is where Sean really challenged me because um, I didn't. I didn't include them in my package. When it comes to business, like if I'm not like spoiling my clients, I'm fairly cheap when it comes to my business. And if I'm being honest, seven years ago when I went and looked up Kiss, I was like, oh gosh, I can't afford that. Like I can't afford those albums. Like pff, I'm moving on. And I moved on and I quickly looked around and was like, oh, wait, yeah, yes, I'm going to have to because these ones all pale in comparison to this. And I hadn't even ordered my own photos in an album. I bought somebody else's sample albums off them because I was too cheap to go and buy a normal sample album. OK, it's talking to somebody who like tends to be cheap with her business um, that I didn't think I wanted to. So in order to make up for lost time with 2020, that's why I had to kind of prep them and tell them I sent them an email ahead of the party and I said, hey, talk to your you know fiancés, ask if it's something they're interested in because I'm gonna give you you know a really great deal that you aren't gonna get the rest of the year because I didn't include them. And then you know what I did the next night? As soon as 19 of the 21 brides bought them, I went into my packages for 2021 and I added it all in, that base album, that like just eight by eight fabric album that's just the highlight reel of their wedding day because when I send them that album design and it tells their whole story of their wedding day, and that means their whole package is already paid off, they now have, technically speaking, for my package, $850 in credit to their album, mm -hmm. and I'm going to give them a discount on any upgrades. Yep, that's the way so, to do it. Yeah, I, I, I would say... Yeah, I would say um, name it as an album. Um, if you name it as a credit, it's totally fine. And especially like talk to your CPA about how to do it so that the taxes are um, distributed accordingly. Um, if you call it an album in in your actual, not in your contract, but in your um, pricing sheet, call it an album. Because if you call it an album credit, the first thing a lot of them think, they're all trying to get some type of deal. Um, it may get to a point where they're like, hey, can you take that album credit out? It feels like they're just removing like, it's like having a gift card versus having cash. It feels different. Um, and it's like when you pay with cash versus paying with a credit card versus paying with like a gift card, it feels different. Same thing, the way that it reads is like, 
this is your album. And by that point, the, the other things that we had talked about um, that Tony and I had talked about was like, talk about it on your social media, talk about it. Like as soon as you post it, other people reach out. That's just how it is. Um, but it's like, um, you talk about it on your website, you talk about it on your social, you're talking about it regularly. And then in the conversation, they're going to come in and they're going to be like, hey, can I remove the album out of the package? It's like, um, have you followed me for a while? Like, this is why I do what I do. And so it'll become yeah. less and less about that. If you call it a credit from personal experience, I had a lot more people say like, Hey, can you take that credit out and just charge me X amount less, whatever the credit is. And it was like, if it's an album, it comes less. And then the more you talk about it, the less it will happen. But yeah, um, included in every one of your packages an eight by eight linen thin page is $105 mm -hmm. to you. Um, and, uh, you know, she charges 850 MSRP on it is 600. So MSRP is just suggested retail price. Um, it is professionally printed. We're going to be launching, um, press printed books because some of our big competitors are like, um, what is they're the massive difference? labs and they do. Yeah. Yeah. The that's good. It's a good question. Um, it's a massive difference in the quality of printing, and that's why we've avoided it for so long. We absolutely stand for quality, but I also am like so for the photographer that so many people use these big labs, and all they do, some of them, is press printed. Press printed is like if you look at it under a loop, especially. I used to, I was a pressman. That's like my last, what I call my last real job. When you print ink on paper, um, it's a dot pattern. And so it can only be so sharp when you photograph an image. It is like, that is the DPI it's dots per inch. Um, and so it's like our printers, um, actually printed a thousand DPI, which is most cameras can't even handle that anyway. Um, but, uh, press printed is like, it takes, it's a flower and it's a, it's a pattern. So it puts this flower down for every single, like what a pixel would be. It's a flower. And then depending on the color, it puts different colors over it to create that, like, um, you know, like, uh, you know, RGB or on printing world it's called CMYK. It's the different colors, cyan, magenta, yellow, um, and black. Um, and so it just can't be as tack sharp. And typically that's ink on paper where we image into the paper, just like, like old school, high school, you know, images. And then that paper, you develop the paper. So that is what our machine does, but it lasers it on sharper than your camera even can. So it takes the sharpness of your camera, puts it on the um, paper and then it, it, and then it develops it with the right chemicals. And so it's a silver highlight process. It's, it's called it's silver based and silver is like this gorgeous, precious metal. Um, but it, it, the color pops. Um, we're on a press printed paper. It's a different type of paper and it's ink on paper. So you can literally rub it off as well where ours is imaged in. You'd have to like, you'd have to cut it. I mean, there's no way to get it out. It's imaged in. So the quality is next level. Um, a thin page and a thick page is printed the same exact way. One just has a substrate in between. One does not. It's just back to back. Um, so it's a little more rigid, but, um, we're going to start offering press printed just to get the price down. And then our goal is to like get more and more photographers in that are using the, these, these labs that just like create all the products. Um, we're going to compete with them a little bit more so that, and then we'll graduate them into like, we're going to show you how to, once we get you in the door, we're going to educate you on how to like at least show your clients the differences. Cause some people have been like, Oh, I ordered a book from so-and-so and then I got one of yours and I could see why it's a little bit more money, you know? And it's like, yeah, I know I'm not going to be the one that like is out there preaching that all the time, but it's like, you get what you pay for. There's no doubt about it. So that's the difference. Um, like I said, we're going to announce it, but that is a great book to start with. And for $105, you don't even have to raise your prices because if you put it in your package today, it's just, again, I, I talk about it all the time, but you can make so much by serving them. That is only a highlight reel. When you show them the full length story of their wedding and you communicate it clearly in the way that we talk about it, they can't help but like upgrade the album. And you're not like this salesy person. You're just serving them in a way that they ultimately want to be served anyway, you know? That's really cool. Um, is one of the questions I it translates so well with your software that, that KISS offers too, because um, you can use their design software or you don't have to, but no matter what, you should be using their slideshow link because you put your spreads in there and then you get to send the album the way it's designed with pages to flip. And the coolest part is that you put in the bottom how much credit they have because now they've paid their wedding mm -hmm. invoice. And that value of the album for me is 850. So they now immediately have a credit of 850 and that, the, this Kiss Book's done this for you, which is so cool. So you just put the amount in and then how much the other album is and it shows them the remaining balance, which is cool because then they're not sticker shocked. They're like, oh yeah, I've already, 
I already get that much from Tony, so awesome. Mm -hmm. I don't mind upgrading because I've already got that much from Tony. Yeah, we try and learn outside of our industry a lot, you know, and so we, it, it, lots of us have bought cars and stuff like that. And typically we go in and, and what's the question we ask? Like, how much is this a month? You know, we don't ask how much this car is. We ask how much it is a month. And we're not trying to sell somebody a used car, you know, like that's not what we're doing. We're serving them with like their story and like there's so much more that goes into it. But we've learned from that industry in a way that it's like, if they see an album, let's say your album is like $3,500, right? The calculator says it's $3,500, but then it says, but remember you have an $850 album credit and any upgrade you get this, you know, you can give a discount or you, or you don't have to, but it, then it, if it, it can show the discount and then it shows like, so at the end it goes from a $3,500 album to like two payments of, that's the way I did it. Cause then it was like, it went from a $3,500 album to like, you can give me $800 now and $800 when you pick it up. And they're like, oh, it's only $800. Like they're sticker shocked maybe by the $3,500, but you're like, but no, no, no. The line underneath it says you have a $850 credit and then here's your 30% discount or whatever you do. And so you just walk them through that and then they can breathe, you know, like they're like, oh, I'm okay. Like I'm going to order it now. And then it yeah. takes my album company. It only takes us three weeks to do it, but I would always say like five or six weeks. And then that's when I would like hand deliver it to them, record them viewing it for the first time, just on my phone. And then post that to social with their approved, like they, they like being on our social media. Uh, but then I post it on social media so other people can see another client going through the album and they want to feel those feelings. It's just like, it all ends up turning into like more business, more money. You know, it's like, it's not salesy though. Like I, I used to say, like, do you want to sell an album to every one of your clients? Now I say, do you want to serve every one of your clients with an album or not? Like they ultimately with want the, an album. Yeah, they think they're going to go album. get it on their own. Yeah. 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 Um, but we'll, we'll answer this one more question. Then we'll wrap it up. Um, how do you pitch parent albums on them? And when do you do it? Ooh, when well maybe you can answer the when, because sure. I think yeah, that's yeah. good. We have a really good like timeline of that. Yeah. Um, again, you can just um, go down to one of the videos um, that, that talks about the whole timeline. I have a timeline and I haven't shared it in the sales tools yet because we're refining it. We actually, I just saw a mock-up of this website that we've built where it walks you through the timeline. And when you click on it, it shows you the email. I can't wait for that to come out. And I'm like, team's going to kill me for even saying that right now because it's just like in very mock-up but we're, we're we're getting to it and i'm that guy like that's just it um so if you include albums or sorry um the, the best way that it works is if you include an eight by eight linen thin page album in your in every single one of your packages if you're twenty five hundred dollars or more per wedding i would say just like add it into your packages um and you communicate in the consultation that most of my clients end up sp spending extra money on albums. It's just, it's an honest thing and you're setting the expectation for the experience. Then before you get to the engagement session, there's an email that we've written. It's in the sales tools. If you go to kiss and you have an account, you go to my kiss, which is your dashboard. You scroll down. There's this thing called sales tools. All the emails are in there. There's also like photos that you can share on your social. You can utilize it for your website, whatever. We're trying to build as many tools to help as possible. In there is an email that is the engagement email before the engagement. You can say like, I'm looking, really looking forward to photographing your wedding or to photographing your engagements next week we're going to be photographing on the beach so your hair might blow a little bit just wear your hair accordingly here's colors to wear here's colors to avoid whatever have a something personable in there um, and then say like what's in your package is a great album um, for engagements and for parent albums most people end up upgrading to a 10 by 10 or like a thick page or something like that um, so i'd love to show you an engagement book of your photos are you interested at all um, and then the follow-up to that would be um, even if they say like no you could say like i went ahead and just designed you this book because i really want you to see it it's a fun way of doing like a sign-in book at your wedding um, this is the first time you've been photographed by a professional photographer as a couple very likely um, mm -hmm. so i just wanted to design it for you you continue to leave it in your in their court you're not like pushy or sales you don't even share pricing with it necessarily um, but that is the way to do it on both ends. And you just follow up with the design. The design literally takes you 15 minutes. And also we just created a code. Our design service is only $49 from KISS um, for us to design it for you. And we designed it in 24 hours and you have it the next day. I was like, I want to remove every barrier, especially during like all this co Corona COVID yeah. stuff. And so I said, let's just do it for half the price. So for 20, under $25, 
we'll design a book for you and we'll even communicate with your clients if you want. It's insane, I know, but we're trying to show people like, hey, this totally works. So for 25 bucks, we'll do 2450 right now, we'll design it for you. And it doesn't take very long to design an engagement book because it's not like in the same order that a wedding album is. It's just engagement photos. Super easy. Just share it with them and say, like, this book is normally $850. You can just say it's that or like what what we do. MSRP is $600. And then we do 30% discount on any upgrade that they do. And that's what MSRP is based on. There's still enough profit in there for you. So you can say, like, this book's normally $600. Bucks. Um, I'm running a you know a deal for you that I that I promised you in the initial um, consultation. 30% on all upgrades. So it's only $420. You can pay me what is that 210 now and 210 when you get it and to them they're like they either take it or they leave it parent oh. albums are done at that same time so at, at that same time you've said engagement and parent albums so on the tail end of that you say like hey i want your clients or sorry i want your parents to have a copy of your book if they want it my album company gives me a discount and i'd love to pass that on to you um, can i get your parents email so that's when I, it's not weird to ask that. And they can say no. If they say no, you just re reply. We have a parent email as well in the sales tools. Um, just say like, can you forward this to your parents? Then I want them to just know that they can have this. And so what we do is um, you order the main um, album at the same time you order copies, parent copies, and we discount the whole order um, based on that. That's when I order a little kiss as well and then send them a thank you note after and all that kind of stuff. That's all in that other video. So. That's a long-winded yeah. answer, but I, I want to make sure you have all the pieces because that's how it works well. I want. I also just wanted to ask one follow-up thing on that. So if your client decides that, oh, wow, yeah, I love this. I'm going to use my complimentary album as my, meaning the, the, get the album that they're, you're giving them. Yep. I'm going to use that as the one Ra you know, Rachel or Tony is giving me. Um, yep. Then do what if they're like, oh, I already got an album. I don't need a wedding one. Yeah. Do you, I will send that you know, beautiful design that you made. Um, and, um, you know, I really want you to have an album that you will just yep. have stacked on your table at home that will look gorgeous with your engagement photos. It just completes your story. Yeah. Um, the way that to, to even word, I need to reread back through the email of this specific one because the way I've been teaching on it for a while may not be the same way that we wrote it. But in there, I would say... Um, this is a great engagement type of book. Most of my clients end up upgrading from this book for their wedding album. If you want, so like w when I respond, um, maybe it's the second email. If you want this book, I can't let you use this one as your engagement book because I'm so committed to you having a wedding album. That takes priority over an engagement book. If you can only have one, please utilize this as your wedding um, if you want to add one this is when you can add one and that's why i give you that discount or not you know like so some people do some people don't um, that's the way that i would do it be like the thing about communication in any relationship especially around money this is where you can lose trust and communicating clearly is a is a difficult thing for creatives in general this is me putting them in a box but i'm a creative as well so i get it it's it's totally a, a refined skill to try and get what's going on in here out here clearly and then we're people pleasers by nature so we want to like never we want to make them feel good and we want to say yes to everything. We have to just be very careful to be super clear about this. We're not being salesy. We're offering something that they can take or not. It's totally up to them. But if we miscommunicate something about this at some point, then all of a sudden we give them an invoice and they're like, wait, what? Like you never said that this was a highlight reel. If you said it's a highlight reel and that they'll spend extra money and that, you know, these albums are, you know, these, like an engagement book is something I'm going to offer you. If you say it through the whole thing and you continue to communicate it, they're never going to feel like, well, you nickel and dime me or how dare you, you know, you're clear about it the whole time. You're not selling, you're not staring pricing the whole time. There's a specific way that we do it and we've lined it all out. But if you clearly communicate it and you, and you do it often enough to where they don't feel like you're like selling to them, but they're just feeling like, Oh, Oh, I have access to this. I have access to that. You know? And you just give yeah. them the opportunity to to lean into that or not. It's like, it's a total gift to them. I mean, the thing about an engagement book is their friends find their favorite photo and they get to sign next to that photo. It's a really fun book yeah. to have at the wedding too. And it's not that much money. In grand scheme of things, they spent like 
tens of thousands of dollars on their wedding. This is like under a thousand dollars. And it's one of the pieces that they're going to talk about. Like, Oh, that's such a cool thing. I get to find this and I get to sign into it. And then when they look through their engagement book, they're going to see one of their friends that signed something that's very much their friend. It could be something totally dumb or something super heartfelt or whatever. It's such a cool gift. And I yeah. love that. And so I serve tons of my clients with that. You have five opportunities to sell albums to serve your clients with five albums. You have the main wedding album, you have engagements, um, you have each parents. And then like, if you do boudoir or something like that. So I, I regularly see um, uh, orders go out and we're just over one per order. Like it used to be, uh, my average was like three per wedding. Um, because you can show up for the parents, you can show up for engagements, there's all these different ways. Um, but like you're, you're showing up and serving in a ton of different ways. I've had past clients that I have coached that went from like selling to 35 weddings, same thing. They sold four albums one year. The next year they sold six, uh, 50 albums and they took home $60,000. I know it works. And they haven't even introduced their boudoir albums to the clients yet. Like they just shoot boudoir and like share it type of a thing. And so they're, they're on track to make over a hundred thousand dollars this year. And that's just like a year after we talked about how to implement the system. They're just yeah. showing up and serving their clients are referring them more now than ever as well, because they now have this album to show on top of it. It's like, it all ends up rolling out. And like, Tony, you can be skeptical. That's what's great about having Tony on. Cause it's like not the album owner. It like telling you to sell albums. It's like, I know it works. I've done I was, it. I was skeptical when you said how much money I could add to my business. I was just kind of like, how, how will I do this? And then in the last six weeks, I said it once I've made a lot. I, I, sold $11,500 worth of albums. Like what? Like that's yeah. just five weeks. Like yeah. what can be done with my bride's upcoming, you know? So right. that's why I'm getting, you know, fired up and passionate about it because I never in a million years, like people will look at that and be like, oh, well, that's not me. Like I'm not Tony. I don't have that many clients or whatever. Y'all that was to like four, five clients. Okay. That's like, that's not that many people. Right. So I mean, it, it, it absolutely does work if you're willing to put in the time and, and, and that you have the heart behind it. So, yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking a lot about this, even for myself, like during a time like this, I wish I had a bigger war chest and I wish I didn't have to lay off some people. And I wish, I wish, I wish. Right. So the next time something like this hits or some, some, something that I can't see coming comes, um, I want to set myself up, you know? And so, um, just to be guarded as much as possible, same thing in your business. Like if you yeah. are shooting, five weddings a year, 10 weddings a year, 30, 40 weddings a year. I, I like, I love that. And if you're serving them with albums, you have so much more income, so much more referrals, so many more opportunities for people to see your photos. Like the difference between somebody saying like on Facebook, like, Hey, who would you use as a photographer? That's a great referral. And it's probably a signed contract. If someone's over at their house and they flip through their wedding album, it's like, you can just send them a contract because they're going to sign it. Like, but what you can do with that money, and this is something I think I'm going to get into in the future is like how to set up photographers for like times like this, you know, like if you, if we have more money to invest, like in other properties, like, like even like your getaway cabin in vacations, yeah. investing in yourself and in like going to workshops and stuff. If you shoot five weddings a year at $2,500 a pop, you probably shouldn't be going to, workshops. Like you probably don't have the money to, but if you shoot five weddings this year and you serve them with five to 10 albums, you can make like a lot of extra cash that you can reinvest in yourself, either in your, yourself personally. Those are those goals. Yeah. yeah celebrate. Can, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we need to re know that like there's times where we can't take pictures and it, we could not have dreamed of it before this. Right. But if I am not actually taking pictures, I'm not making money. Like that is a tough spot to be in. And there's going to be people on the other side of us that, that don't make it through. And I hate that. It hurts my heart, but how can we show up and serve? Like, I know that you're serving with something like an album that your client ultimately wants. Like, yeah. And I think that it can save a marriage and it could be a need in their family. I don't know, you know, but it is something you're serving them with that they ultimately want in their minds. They're going to take your images and they're going to go buy an album anyway. Right. But look what they're going to get. If they get it statistics say they're probably not going to get it anyway. 
All of them think they are going to go get it. But there's so many photographers that I talk to regularly at trade shows and the, these workshops and stuff that are like, yeah, I got married five years ago. I don't have a I book, you know? Yeah. And I was like, that is gold. Go design a book, make it for yourself and share that story like over and over again and tell them you want none of your clients in the future to have the same experience that you had. doesn't mean the photographer was bad or a bad person or anything like that. It just means like, I just don't want my clients to feel that, you know? Right. So yeah, uh, I'll answer this one real quick. Perfect um, album for a family. Uh, the stack is a little bit different. I go four by eight by 10 by. I have a little stack right here. So I go four by eight by 10 by the perfect wedding stack is from here down. This is a 12 by 12 in like a custom linen. Uh, this is the perfect album for families. You can start in this one because it's more affordable and a session's usually like 500 bucks versus like a wedding's usually like a couple thousand dollars. Um, but you can start in a four by four um, and it's really affordable 60 or $90 for a leather. Um, and so you, we have MSRP on that as well. Um, they started like 300 for MSRP and then again, just design them and then show them the next level up. Um, and you can serve them with like more spreads with a bigger book, those types of things. But that uh, for a family album, we have, we have, um, seven or eight of these, um, eight by eight linens in, in my wife's office, um, because we hire a photographer every year to photograph our family. And then we, just create an album around it. And my kids love it. Like I love it. My 10 year old will come to me this week and be like, let's look through the books. Tell me about me at that age. Like five years ago, tell me about, tell me a story about me at that age. And it is a gift. But if I, if I have an iPad in front of him, he's going to want to play Roblox or Minecraft. Like he likes looking at photos and, and it's fun. And th th there's a time and a place for that. But um, I will say that family, family albums, like, Ooh man, opportunities are endless. Grandparents, my parents would kill to have an album of their grandkids, let alone like the mini album for mom's purse. Like, hello. Oh, families, I feel like can even go farther. Yeah, I have a friend in Chicago that photographs um, families and they do like over 100 albums a year. They're all eight by eight linen thin page albums, but they crush. I have a friend in um, middle of nowhere, Ohio, and they photograph seniors. Every one of their seniors gets an album. He orders like 70, he ordered 60 or 70 albums last year. And so it's like, it's a perfect book for that because it only costs them $105 and they order them over and over again. So we are way, way over time. Thank you, Tony, for your time. But Absolutely. I could talk about this all day, as you know, and we're going to talk about this more. But um, yeah, where can we find you? And we'll wrap with that. Yeah, you can always find me on Instagram, Tony, T-O-N-I-E, Christine, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E. Um, at Tony Christine. My website's TonyChristine.com. Everything is pretty much Tony Christine. So Look me up. I've got a really actually awesome marketing course that I'm giving away for free. Not like a giveaway, like, oh, it's, I just decided it's sitting on my server. I used to charge for it. I should probably just give it to people right now. So we're getting ready to give that out. If you guys want to want in on that. Yeah. She's so good. Like I love hearing her heart and like getting to know her more. And, um, even like, I'm looking forward to spending a little bit of time with you and Eric sometime up in the, the great Northwest. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get up there and, and, um, serve some more photographers together with like a wine and cheese or something. Um, but thank you so much for being on here. I love hearing your heart. We have a new idea and I'm going to write it down and start preaching about those cards. That is such a good idea. I'm yes, telling you, we're, we're going to your cabin and we're going to dream up some more stuff like that because it is awesome. amazing. So thank you so much for being on here. You're an absolute gift to our industry. I love serving with you. Super grateful for you. Thanks for being on here. Thank you for joining us. Um, definitely check her stuff out. Um, she has just got a ton of information and uh, there's a lot to be just learned is like, how do you want to show up? Who do you want to be? Who are you becoming? I'm going to keep sharing that. Who are you becoming? What's the entrepreneur that you want to be in a year yeah. from now? Where do you want to be? If you set that big, scary dream and vision and have people come alongside you and teach you, you can become that one step at a time. And that is like, if you are a part of this community, if you follow people like Tony, you can become that. You can become the best version of you. That's what she reminded me of today. There's a lot of people I want to be like that I follow and stuff, but I want to be my version of that. And you can have that too. We can just become like 1% better than I was yesterday. Because if I compare myself to Tony, if I compare myself to Tony, I may never live up to that. But if I'm 1% better than I was yesterday, that is Amen. me becoming who I was made to be. 
And so that's what I want for you in your business, in your life personally. We love you and uh, we want to love you well. Give us feedback. Um, continue to post questions here. This will be in the Facebook page um, for the foreseeable future. Um, and uh, we love you. Thanks so much for being here with us. Have a great night.